Ya. Empat, 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 hmm. Belah ada kecil lagi. Okay, saya practice seven point one B. The diagram below shows two histogram of mathematic test mark obtained by two group, Arif and Westari. So, state the distribution shape of the histogram for the two groups. Arif group almost uniform, uniform, whereas the mark of Westari group is bell shape with extreme values. Kalau tengok kat mana extreme values dia kat sini. Hari ni dipanggil uh, extreme values. Maksudnya dalam Westari group ni ada yang pelajarnya okey. Tapi ada yang lemah lah. Ada dua orang kat sini yang lemah. Makan markah di sikit je. Kalau tengok yang lain tu markah 50 and above. Maksudnya kelas ni dia punya tahap um, uh, tahap level apa tu pengetahuan lah. Level pengetahuan pelajarnya ada dua orang je yang macam tak berapa okey lah. Yang lain tu agak bagus lah. 50 and above kan. Ah tu maksudnya lah. Tu maksud extreme value kat sini. Compare the dispersion of test mark between the two group. So the mark of Arif group are more dispersed than the best Arif group sebab nampak lebih sekata. So more more dispersed lah. Which group show better result? Ah, best Arif group sebab most of the marks are better. Kebanyakannya 50 and above. Question number two. The diagram below show the survey result of the traffic flow in two different location. Each location record the speed of 50 cars. Okay, kalau tengok yang pink ni dia punya speed dia tak tinggi. Yang warna biru ni speed dia agak tinggi. Cuma dah bangun. Okay, state the distribution shape in both location. So for location A skewed to the right whereas the distribution shape in location B is bell shape. Compare the distribution of two car speeds in both location. Uh, location A is less dispersed compared to the car speed in location B. In your opinion, which location is highway? So highway ni mestilah yang speed tinggi. So location B is a highway and location A is a housing area. Ada soalan? Ada soalan ke? No, teacher. Okay, uh, soalan macam yang you buat ni uh, tak pernah lagi keluar, macam saya cakap lah tak pernah lagi keluar dalam kertas dua Kertas satu pun sangat jarang. Ha, so tak tahulah yang SPM tahun ni ya, bulan tiga nanti. Kita terus ke new subtopic. Eh, eh, jap, jap. Okay. Okay, learning standard for today's lesson, construct and archive for a set of group data and determine the quartiles. Okay, this is the last uh, graph for this sub uh, this chapter, which is archive. Uh, you dah lukis histogram and frequency table, eh, frequency polygon. So, how to construct and archive for a set of group data? So, ni dia punya step lah, the first one add one class before the first class with zero frequency. Uh, kalau frequency polygon, we add two class. Uh, the first one before the first class and the second one is uh, after the last class. Okay, so for Ojive, only add one class before the first class with zero frequency and then find the upper boundaries and cumulative frequency. Ni dah belajar dah upper boundaries and cumulative frequency. So to draw uh, an ogive, 
we need upper boundary and relative frequency. Yes? Ada yang nak tanya soalan ke? Okay, we proceed. Step 2, choose an appropriate scale on the vertical axis to represent the cumulative frequency. So, means y axis is the cumulative frequency. And the horizontal axis or x axis represent the upper boundaries. Uh, this one biasanya dalam, dalam soalan tu dia dah mention lah. Scale dia. So, step 3, plot the cumulative frequency with the corresponding upper boundary and then draw a smooth curve passing through all the points. Ah, yang ni tak boleh guna pembaris. Kalau frekuensi polygon wajib guna pembaris. Histogram pun sama. But for archive, uh, tak boleh guna pembaris. Kena lukis guna um, curve, flexible curve uh, ruler tu ataupun by hand lah. Okay, kuartal. What is kuartal? Ni kuartal dah belajar dah masa form 4 tapi form 4 tu for ungroup data. So for group data, with the number data n, number of data n, maksudnya uh, total frequency lah ni. The quartile can be determined from the ogive. So Q1, Q2 and Q3. Q1, Q1 is the first quartile, Q2 median, Q3 third quartile are uh, the values that correspond to the cumulative frequency. So ni um, kita kira daripada cumulative frequency n over 4 for q1 of first quartile n over 2 median 3n over 4 q3 or third quartile so this is the example of the question the frequency table on the right show the salt content of 60 types of food construct an object to represent the data from the ogive, determine the first quartile, the median and the third quartile. So mean, this is Q1, Q2 and Q3. So first draw uh, frequency table. Don't forget to add one class before the first class with zero frequency. And then you need upper boundary and the cumulative frequency. Next, draw a uh, draw an ogive. Uh, yang act exist ni adalah uh, upper boundary. Upper boundary. This one cumulative frequency. Uh, yang ni yang kena lukis dengan kemas. Kalau tak lukis kemas nanti tak dapat tak boleh dapat answer for Q1, Q2 and Q3. So kita nak cari kuartal. So first number of data is 60. Therefore for the first kuartal n over 4 equals to 15. Uh, this one for Q1. First kuartal. This one for median and third kuartal. So this is the formula. So daripada sini 15, 30 and 45 ambil daripada cumulative frequency. Okay. 15 uh, to the graph and then to the x axis. So this is the uh, first quartile. So this is first quartile. Median 30 to the graph to the x axis. So this is median and third quartile ah uh, yang ni kena pandai kira. Macam mana nak kira ni? Okey, salah satu cara first you minus 288.5. Ah uh, yang ni kat tengah-tengah kan. So tu 299.5 minus 249.5 Then you get um, Berapa ya? 5 So 5 divided by 10 Because ada 10 kotak kat sini Sebab kita nak cari 1 kotak tu value dia berapa 
So 5 divided by 10 is 1 over 2. 0 0.5 kan? So satu kotak kecil 0 0.5. So you kira berapa kotak kecil ni? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So first 6 times 0 0.5. Then plus... 249.5 Haa macam tu Ni kena tepat Kalau tak tepat Jawapan ni macam contohnya lari Daripada graph you lah Jawapan you mungkin lain daripada orang Daripada kawan Tapi uh, apa tu Pemeriksa akan refer your graph Contoh you punya uh, Apa tu You punya anak panah kat sini Tapi you punya jawapan macam lari Contoh you buat 2.8.5.5 contohnya. Ha, kat situ dia akan ha, didak mark lah. Tapi kalau jawapan you tak sama dengan kawan. Ha, lari sikit. Maybe lari 0 0.5 to 1. Ha, tu tak apa sebab you punya garisan ni tak sama dengan kawan. Sebab yang lukis tu tangan lain-lain kan. Ha, so mungkin ada beza sikit. So kalau dalam exam dia akan ada range jawapan. Okay. Ada soalan tak untuk first quartile, median and third quartile? Teacher. Ya? Yeah? The x-axis, how to like mark? X-axis, okay. But, uh, you you boleh tinggalkan ruang dua Ha, satu kotak yang besar tu kat sini Then you start with first upper boundary From your table just now Okay, this one First upper boundary Yang you tambah sendiri with zero frequency So dia mesti start dengan zero lah ha, You jangan start ha, kat sini Tapi sebenarnya nak start kat sini pun boleh Untuk uh, Untuk Ajaif Maksudnya you start with 99.5 here So you akan dapat graph tu uh, Macam ni lah uh, Boleh juga Okay untuk Or give Untuk ojive sahaja You boleh start kat sini The first upper boundary tu Tapi untuk histogram dengan Frekuensi polygon Mesti tinggal satu ruang kat sini Tapi kalau you takut confuse You apa tu Set je dalam Minda you, setiap kali nak start lukis histogram, frekuensi polygon or ojive, you tinggalkan je du, uh, satu kotak Makanya satu kotak tu, iaitu CM tu, CM tu Okay, boleh tak? Okay, teacher Hmm, lepas tu Yang ni tak perlu kira, selepas uh, satu kotak besar tu terus you start dengan second upper boundary Biasanya dalam soalan tu dia akan bagilah 2CM to 5 unit contoh. Kadang-kadang ada pelajar dia confuse kat situ. 5 unit tu macam mana? Ha, ni kenapa tak sekata kan? Ha, jangan risau yang tu. Untuk yang cumulative frequency memang kena betul-betul tengok pada uh, soalan 2CM dia nak berapa unit. Tapi untuk um, act exist ni you terus start dengan first upper boundary Lepas tu terus continue setiap satu kotak tu ataupun 2 cm tu continue je dengan apa boundaries yang lain. Okay. Okay. Cumulative histogram and ogive can be constructed using cumulative frequency table. Ha, ini namanya adalah cumulative histogram. Maksudnya histogram ni dilukis uh, dengan y axisnya adalah cumulative frequency. Ha, ni tak pernah lagi uh, di uh, tak pernah lagi buat. Tapi dalam your syllabus KSSM ada. So kena tunjuk juga. So ini namanya cumulative histogram. Community histogram is constructed just like histogram 
but the vertical axis is represented by cumulative frequency as I said just now. By referring to the example 7, the cumulative histogram and the related archive are shown below. So, ni uh, combine of histogram and archive tadi lah. Okay, next. Percentile. Ini uh, baru. Kalau you tanya your senior last year, dia orang tak ada belajar benda ni. Percentile. Dia orang hanya belajar kuatal. First kuatal, median, third kuatal. Uh, you ada tambahan. Percentile. Okay, we can analyze a large data more easily and effectively when we divide the data into small part which is known as percentile. A percentile is a value that divide a set of data into 100 equal parts and represent by P1, P2, P3 until P99. Hmm, okay, maksud dia kat sini, quartile, you hanya ambil um, the first quarter and then median and then third, third quarter, third quarter kan for the data. But percentile, you boleh kira daripada satu. P1 ni mean 1%. Ha? P2, 2% until 99%. Maksudnya you boleh cari lagi kecil lah data tu. Kan kalau you cari um, kuartal, dia 1 over 4. Kalau percentile ni, you boleh kira daripada 1%. Okay, contoh. The Jive on the right show the score of an aptitude test obtained from candidate who are applying for a post in a company. So based on the Ojai find the third percentile or P10. Number two, the 46th percentile or P46. Maksudnya mana? Okay. Maksudnya 10% lah. 10%, 46%. So 10% of the total frequency 10 over 100 time total frequency Total frequency biasanya dia ada cakap dalam soalan Tapi kalau tak cakap dalam soalan You boleh tengok dekat Ojaif uh, The last ni value kat sini adalah 50 So mean uh, total frequency equals to 50 Good. Ada yang tak ada soalan? Okay, so 10 over 100 times 50 equals to 5. Uh, so daripada 5, sini, sini 5. To the graph, to the uh, x axis. So you will get uh, P10 46.5. Uh, boleh cari lagi kecil lagi lah. Kalau you guna kuartal, you hanya boleh 1 over 4 sahaja. Kalau percentile boleh cari banyak. Okay, 46% of the total frequency, so 46 over 100 times 50, you get 23. So from the graph, cumulative frequency 23 here. So to the graph and to the act axis, so here is 33.5. So Alan could would be the deeper. Only those candidate who obtain 92 percentile and above will be called for an interview. What is the minimum score required in order to be called for an interview? So, mula-mula cari dulu 92 percent, 46. So, from the graph, 46 here. Then you will get 77. So therefore, only candidate with a minimum score of 77 will be called for an interview. Ada soalan untuk percentile? Okay, so Alan C tadi. What is the percentage of the candidate who obtain a score of 55, eh sorry, 57 and 
above uh, and below. 57 and below. Okay. Yang ni. Kena tengok daripada ojive. Cari 57. So 40, uh, 57 here. Okay. To the graph and to the y axis which is 15. So 15 over 50 times 100 is 30%. Therefore, 30% of the candidate obtain a score of 57 and below. Okay, ni dia baca terbalik daripada upper boundary to cumulative frequency. Alright. Habis dah? So, this is your homework, self-practice 7.1c. Before we end our class, ada soalan? Ada soalan tak? No, DJ. Okay, so kalau tak ada, boleh uh, start buat homework sekarang. Sekejap kita tengok homework dulu. Homework ada dua soalan. Satu dan dua. Ah, itu je. Okay, Dicah. Okay, bye. Thank you, Dicah. Bye.